It's an insulin. I don't have a pulse. It's hard CPR. Okay. We have to be ready for everything, and a lot of times you don't get a chance to see that before you see it in real life. Simulation and this practice that we get here is the only time that you see it before you're treating a real patient. Orchestras and sports teams and armies and pilots and basically every discipline you can think of, they spend almost their whole careers practicing. We need to do more training on a regular basis in order to make our skills as sharp as possible. We had an empty ambulance bay after we did a renovation on our department. One weekend, a colleague of mine and uh, our sons came in and we basically took the space over. The equipment that we have in this room was relocated from other spots to create the space. We basically invented this over a weekend thinking that simulation needed to happen here. The sky is the limit for us. We've done great things with what we have and I know that we can be so much better with a state-of-the-art facility. We need to think about why this could have happened. If anybody has any ideas. Could be a poison or a tox. So As residents, part of our training is doing practice cases such as this. So on a regular basis, we do simulation cases for really difficult things that we don't necessarily see all of the time, but that are very time critical. Well, this is learning in an active format where we simulate real cases. We have various disciplines who come here, nurses and paramedics, internal medicine, critical care, postgraduate nursing programs. That is the great thing about simulation is you have a learner group that you know is coming. Here are your learning objectives and you can make that experience completely tailored to that group. If you've ever had a loved one who's ever been in hospital whose care has been exemplary, uh, behind that are hours and hours and hours of simulation and getting it right. If you've done it before in sim, then uh, you're going to be that much more prepared and that much more comfortable to make those decisions and provide better care. Once you hear the sound of the monitor, you see your colleague's urgency, you forget that this is a simulation case. That experience of treating this mannequin becomes that experience of treating a real patient. We're going to continue good CPR. These decisions are critical thinking decisions and those have to be made on the fly in a very chaotic and stressful environment. I remember being a new resident here and being thrown into these cases and my heart was pounding and searching for what to do and not knowing and slowly as I've had more practice it's made me a much stronger practitioner so I think that it's a really critical part of our training. The really important part of a learning exercise is not only putting your hands on and doing CPR, but then stopping and saying, okay, so let's go talk about this case. It's going through, what did you see? How did you feel about that? And tell me what we could have done better or tell me what you thought went really well and how can we improve that for the next time? It's a positive experience for all the learners and it translates far and wide, not just in this space and not just in this hospital, but province wide. We came in here one weekend, put our time in, which has got this running and certainly we never had this before. But it still is very much a pretty primitive looking sim bay and what we'd like to be able to do is go from a mannequin back to a cadaver learning, back to the mannequin in one space that's incredibly accessible for staff in the hospital. People should be excited by what's happening here. Having a new renovated simulation space is just going to make us so much better. What we're going to be doing here in the next little while with a renovated space is going to be, be world-leading.